Oh dear. Shed's getting messy. Already getting messy. You know, I don't, I think this is like the sixth or seventh episode I've filmed and I haven't uploaded it to the channel yet. So I have no idea whether you guys are enjoying the series or not. It's gonna be pretty awkward if you don't. But we'll just carry on anyway. Woo, it's hot in here. It is roasting. It's about 38 degrees here in the shed. I'm sweating, but we're gonna build something. In today's episode of Shed Sunday, we are gonna build a coaster from sticks. For those wondering what a coaster is, it's something that you put your hot cup of tea or coffee on to stop your table burning. First thing we need to do is go and collect some hazel sticks. Hazel is an easy tree to identify. It's usually widespread, especially in deciduous forests here in the UK. It has a large green leaf. It tends to grow very straight. And at about this time of year, late summer and beginning of early autumn, it grows small little nuts, which are very tasty. However, the squirrels will beat you to it first. I've got two lengths of about three feet here, three and a half feet. And the first thing I need to do is strip the bark off. So when I'm stripping the bark off, I'm just using a Mora Companion bushcraft knife. You wanna do it really fine. So you don't want to dig too much into this stick purely because you want to keep as much roundness to that diameter as possible. If I dig in too deep, it's going to square it off. So literally just get that slice through that cambium layer, the top layer like that, and just slightly turn it and slice again. Pretty much like slicing a potato. You just want to take that, that top layer of bark off. In fact, a potato peeler would probably work fairly well as well if you're doing this with kids. And there's going to be a few knots as well. You just want to chop through those where you can. Try and keep that circular diameter to the stick as much as possible. And then just take off any sort of green, green bits. This is going to make a mess as well, wherever you do it. That's why I'm in the shed. So the wife doesn't tell me off. That's what it should start to look like. Nice, clean, nice and white. So you do that to the rest of the stick, work your way back, keep working your way back and then I'm going to do it to the other stick as well. I can feel that since stripping that layer, that it's nice and moist and damp here. So that's, you know, I know it's green wood. Okay, so I've stripped the bark off. You can see I've got two different diameter sticks. I'm going to start with this thicker one first to make, to allow for the drill holes so that they don't split. This one is kind of like a backup stick in case it goes wrong with this. What I need to do is break this up into segments. Probably, if I'm thinking of a, uh, of a coaster, like a normal coaster, I would say about nine to 10 centimeters. Now, you, I might you can sand this, but where it's been wet, the sandpaper won't have too much of an effect, but I will just give it a quick rub over with this some sandpaper. So first off, gonna mark nine mil. Well, I don't want that end bit, because that's all split. So I'm just gonna keep marking about nine, 90 millimeters, sorry, nine centimeters. I'm trying to keep it as exact as I can all the way along. I'm probably gonna do eight segments of these. It should be enough surface area to cover a mug, a standard mug. I do switch between Imperial and metric. Sorry guys, that's just the way, this, this is my dad and me. Dad does a lot of Imperial. I was brought up metric. So I get a mixture of both. It's just the way I've sort of been brought up and do it. Apologies for that. Now into the vise. And I'm actually gonna use the saw that's on my pen knife, my pocket knife, because it's a nice fine blade. It's a nice easy blade to use. It doesn't kind of splinter too much. I could use some pruning uh, scissors as well, actually. I guess that might, might be easier. Tear the fibers a bit less than this does. That's, that's fairly clean. That's a fairly clean cut. I'm quite happy with that. Guys, I think I'm gonna get back out of the shed. It is too hot. Don't know if you can see that. That is the temperature inside the shed, 38 degrees Celsius, 100 Fahrenheit. It's hot. I'm gonna start to work outside, it's too hot. Jack's is out here as well. You gonna help me? I'm outside, so apologies if you can hear the traffic. It's just too hot in the shed. So what I'm gonna do, you can see where, the, where it's green, the wood splits. I'm just gonna cut these, these areas with the scissors 
any bits that are sticking out like that, just cut cut with scissors. It just you don't want to saw that bit; it will uh, fray a little bit too much. So any excess slithers of, of green wood, just snip off, and then we'll sand it afterwards. So we the edges are still really frayed. You probably can't see it too much. There's still lots of fibers just sticking out from the edge. So what I'm going to do is put these on the sandpaper like that and just spin it round. To be honest, it's harder with dry wood to, to do this, with green wood, sorry, to do this. It's easier with dead wood, dried out, and it's probably a good time to let these dry now. But unfortunately, I just don't have the time, so I'm doing it whilst green now. I'm just going to do the edges like that as well. So here's the finished sticks. There's eight of them overall, two, four, six, eight. And also I was lucky enough to get a spare one in case I make a mistake. Next thing I need to do, you can imagine that's, that's gonna be the, the coaster there. So they're all pretty much level. Obviously it's not perfect because it's not done by machine, uh, but I am gonna use a machine in a minute. I'm gonna use a drill and I need to drill holes about, I'm gonna go about 13 mil because if I go too close to the end here with a hole, it's gonna split through the end. So I reckon I'm gonna go about 13 mil in and just mark just a little hole there. Same again on the other side, 13 mil, mark a hole. Just there. I'm gonna do that to all of them. So there's my two holes. I've got them on all the pieces. I now need to drill these holes. I'm probably gonna use a four mil drill bit to get kind of a pilot hole. because I don't wanna split it with too big a drill bit. Uh, and then I'm gonna use a six mil drill bit, which should be able to feed the, feed the cordage through. So it's always bound to split on one side a little bit, but that's fine, we can sand and peel that off later. Okay, pro tip, definitely drill a lot slower. It stops it splitting as much, as with most drilling. So that mashed them up quite a bit. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I should have done it with, um, let it dry the wood and then done it to it. Could be because it's green that it's splintered it. Maybe it's the size of the drill bit, who knows? Either way, I need to tidy it up. So I'm just gonna peel away these greener bits because it's not gonna make too much of a difference. Just using the edge of the table here to rub the stick. Get the right angle to rub the, uh, the holes of the stick over the sandpaper. I'm gonna do another batch of these at some point, but let them dry out and see if that makes it any easier letting it dry out and trying it that way, because that way the wood would have expanded as well then, done all the expanding it needs to where it's lost that moisture. It's experimenting here, really. I reckon if you let it dry, it might be a bit a bit easier. Who knows? Oh, well, well, maybe you guys know. So now comes the fun part where I feed the cord through. I'm just using some black leather cordage. You can use paracord, I guess, if you want to. Leather just makes it a bit more rustic. Where I've drilled through, for example, on this one, where I've drilled through the holes on one side, the other side splits as it does naturally when you drill. So I'm gonna keep the kind of pretty side on the outside of the, the, the coasters themselves. So there's gonna be bits pull out of the way for this. It's not gonna to be too pretty but it's a practical thing at the end of the day. Feed a load on first. Keep them all facing the same way. I did actually go for a six mil drill bit in the end to fit this leather cordage, just because of the shape of the cordage. I guess you could do this out in the field, out in the woods, just whittle a stick down and use, use a kind of awl or a tool on your multi-tool or something to punch the holes. You could definitely do this out whilst out in the woods. You could even use 
natural cordage like nettle cordage, tree root cordage, anything like that. So that's half, I want them about halfway to begin with. And I put the other half through. Where I've got to this stage now, I just grab the two pieces of cord evenly, pull this through like that, and it, it, it kind of leaves a, a loop there. Now you could just not, you could just have two individual pieces of cord and just tie a knot off there and tie a knot off there. But I'm just doing it this way because I guess it's a personal preference. Use that loop to put on a nail and hang up if I wanted to hang them up. It's just a decorative thing really. So next thing is to tie an overhand knot this end, just here. So I'm just literally a simple kind of whatever you want to call it, granny knot, overhand knot, stop knot. I'm just tying it off at this end. Keeping it all nice and tight, just like so. Scissors or a knife, we're just going to use a knife in this case. And there we go, a finished hazel sapling bushcraft style coaster. There's only one thing to do now, get a cup of tea. Perfect. So there you go. Clear to see that the coaster works. Is it pretty? Not really. Is it practical? Hell yeah. By the way, help support the channel. Woodsman Mugs, taofficial.com. Link in description. Yeah.